Hey everybody, welcome back to episode two in this week's series on safer sex. Um, if you didn't catch my intro video talking about uh, safer sex and why we're covering this topic um, and the importance of talking about safer sex in this uh, day and age, then check out the video right before this one. It's the first episode in the series. Today for our safer sex topic, we are going to be talking about abstinence. Now, abstinence is a great form of safer sex. It's prob it's not probably, it is uh, the most effective form of safer sex because if you're practicing abstinence, you're not having sex at all. So it's not even safer sex, it's just not having sex, uh, which is a really great choice. I always tell people like, if you don't wanna have sex, you shouldn't be having sex. Um, or if you don't think you're ready to have sex, don't have sex. Do you have plenty of time to be having sex in the future? Um, and you don't need to worry about having it right now, especially when I talk to like my high school students, um, my middle school students. I always tell them like, yeah, sex can be this like really great, fantastic thing, but it also has a lot of responsibilities associated with it when it comes to safer sex and things like that. And so I always tell them like, look, maybe you're 15, 16 years old right now. Um, you have like... 50, 60 more years ahead of you where you could be having sex. Uh, and so there's no need to be doing it right now. There's plenty of time to do it in the future. However, uh, something, a couple things happen when people are practicing abstinence. One of the major things is that they only practice some forms of abstinence. And so if you're trying to prevent pregnancy, avoiding vaginal sex or, or being abstinent from vaginal sex, great for avoiding pregnancy. Uh, but if you're trying to avoid other things like STIs and stuff like that, you can't just, you can't have other forms of sex. You have to abstain from all forms of sex. Uh, the only form of sex you could probably participate in if you are uh, trying to avoid STIs and pregnancy would be something like mutual masturbation, where you're touching your uh, genitals and your partner's touching their genitals, uh, and there's not too much back and forth touching. That's, you know, a form of sexual activity you could do that's really low risk. Uh, but for the most part, if you're abstinent, you have to be abstinent from everything. Oral sex, mouth on your partner's genitals, penis, vagina, anus. Uh, anal sex, no, uh, put, uh, avoiding your partner's like, you know, penis and anus or things like that. Uh, people often think like oral sex. If I give someone a blowjob, I'm not going to get an STI from that. But you can. Uh, if you, you know, put your mouth on someone's vagina or on someone's penis or on someone's anus, the fluids from that part of the body will get into your mouth um, and they can spread STIs if your partner is infected with something. So if we're practicing abstinence, we have to make sure we're practicing abstinence in all of its forms to make sure that we're avoiding STIs. Um, another thing that happens with abstinence is that not everybody who's abstinent is abstinent because they want to be. Some people are abstinent just because they don't have any sexual partners right now. And you know that that's why you're absent. That's fine. That's fine. It happens. Uh, we don't always have sexual partners whenever we want them. But if you're abstinent because um, nobody wants to just like, you haven't found anybody to have sex with right now, make sure you have some sort of backup plan like condoms available to you so that if you ever do um, you know, find someone to have sex with, you can then use those condoms to make sure that you're protecting yourself and having safer sex. Um, even if you are practicing abstinence by choice because you have just decided, I'm not gonna have sex yet, I'm not ready. Again, great choice to make but at the same time, make sure that you have some sort of backup method like condoms um, just in case you decide, hey, actually, I decide I want to have sex now. Again, it's your choice. You can decide to have sex, not to have sex, whatever you want um, with your sexual partner. But if you're practicing abstinence, make sure you have a backup method. A lot of times, uh, especially teenagers, we, they don't think like long term into the future about uh, having sex. I talked to somebody uh, a couple months ago before this whole lockdown thing and they were like, you know, mister, uh, I, you know, I, I haven't had sex yet. It was my first time. And I was like, oh, okay. So like, were you dating this person? And they're like, no, like we were just hanging out in my room, playing video games and we had sex. And that happens all the time. Like it's not this like long-term thought out process that you might see in TV shows where you like, you know, you plan for it, you get candles, you have romantic dinner, uh, you get your condoms, things like that. A lot of times it is just spur of the moment, horny teenagers hanging out and they have sex. And because of that, we have to make sure we're just always, always, always ready. 
uh, to protect ourselves from STIs. So having condoms on us is really, really important, even if we are practicing abstinence. Just in case you ever decide to stop practicing abstinence, it's really, really important to have those condoms with you because condoms can just be slipped on with little to no notice. Um, so make sure, you know, come to Planned Parenthood, get some free condoms, just in case. Uh, most of the condoms we give out right now, I'm pretty sure they're good until 2021. So I'm talking to y'all uh, in 2020, um, I think it's June 2020, maybe March like 104th, 2020. But, you know, they're good until 2021 right now. So all the condoms we're giving out right now are good for at least like another year. And so if you come to us, get them for free, you have them with you just in case. And then if you don't ever use them before 2021, throw them out. Get new ones. You don't have to use them. They were free. Um, and that's why it's so great to get condoms for free from Planned Parenthood because you don't have to have that like worry about if you're going to use them all or not. Because if you don't use them all, you can just throw them out. So just to reiterate, con uh, abstinence, amazing, amazing, amazing form of safer sex because you're not having sex. But make sure that if you're practicing abstinence, you are practicing it all its forms. You're not having oral sex. You're not having anal sex. You're not having vaginal sex. Uh, make sure that you are really practicing abstinence in all its forms. Uh, and then have a backup method just in case. You never ever know when like you're going to decide to have sex or when you know someone's going to say, hey, I want to have sex. And you're going to be like, yeah, this is the time. Uh, so have condoms on you just in case. Come to Planned Parenthood. Get your condoms for free. We're still open even though it's uh, COVID right now. Also, if you just need condoms, like hit us up on our Facebook pages. We are happy to uh, try to get them con condoms to you. If you can't get to one of our clinics, we can try to figure out a way to get condoms to you instead. Um, so please hit us up if you need condoms. They're free uh, and they can really just be a great, great, great backup method uh, to make sure that we're preventing STIs. All right, Joe, that's going to be it for today. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to talk about uh, mutual monogamy and polyamory and how to make sure that we're having safer sex in those types of situations. Um, so thanks, everybody. Like and subscribe. I will see you tomorrow.